Now to South America, Argentinians are holding a large demonstration in the capital, Buenos Aires, over controversial economic reforms announced by the country's new president, Javier Malay. Thousands of workers are taking part in a 12-hour strike, also voicing their opposition to planned reforms that are expected to amend labor laws. Malay's government has slashed public spending and devalued the country's currency, arguing the difficult overhauls are necessary after years of overspending that have left the country in debt. But protesters say that the changes have made life for those already struggling even harder, forcing many to ask for help. This is the largest shanty town in Buenos Aires. Alejandra Lopez grew up here, where she runs a soup kitchen financed by the city council. In the last month, food prices have increased by nearly 50 percent. So many people now want to eat here that Alejandra had to start a waiting list. People who haven't been here before ask if we have space for them. And those already here ask if they can have more food. Some neighbors say they come to the soup kitchen because they can only afford proper meals for their children. Once a member of the opposition party, Alejandra says she does not regret voting for Javier Millet. He was a candidate who spoke about what the future could be like. But nobody believed he could have such a big impact on us in such a short amount of time. The kitchen cooks with donations from the authorities in Buenos Aires. The central government does not make any contributions. Luisa Avendano is a cleaner. She eats at the kitchen with her husband and granddaughter. We don't have enough money. We have to do without milk and yogurt and only buy it once in a while. Luisa did not vote for Malay, who came to power on a promise to turn around the economy. He's right on many things, but not on others. I don't agree that we, the workers, the poor, should pay for the mistakes of the politicians. One of Malay's first moves was to remove price controls on certain products, like food and fuel, that had kept them affordable. That's an inflation soaring. By influencing Argentina's entire pricing system, we would inevitably have new prices. The expectation is that by reforming the country's macroeconomy, the economy would stabilize. And in the end, also the prices. While experts agree that prices have to be adjusted, they say it has to happen slowly, not suddenly. The government sees the initiative. It took the bull by the horns. It seems to me that by doing everything all at once and not providing quicker help to those who need it most, the shock was too much and perhaps the reaction was too slow. Many families experienced anguish, which could perhaps have been avoided. In January, the Malay government released more funding to help those suffering under the reforms. But that is not stopping the queues from growing at kitchens like this. All right, joining me now is Facundo Iglesia in Buenos Aires. He's a journalist for the Buenos Aires Herald. Facundo, it's good to have you with us. So talk us through here. We've got another day of protest. Talk us through why people are, are going on the streets. Hello, thank you for having me. So uh, the main reasons uh, are, well, we could say two. First, the austerity measures that Javier Millet launched the day he took office, and then two very uh, massive pieces of legislation, which are a mega decree and a so-called omnibus bill. Uh, both pieces of legislation seek to greatly reshape the face of the Argentine state uh, and have more, even more austerity measures within them. Well, Facundo, he promised to do these when he was running for president. So the people we're seeing protests right now, do they represent a large minority in the country? Or do we, what are their numbers like? Okay, so we have uh, 
hundreds of thousands of working of workers, sorry, from different unions and people that went by their own marching in Congress. And yes, Millet still has a lot of popular support. Uh, the last survey I saw, that, which was uh, a pretty, let's call it, serious survey, said that 63% of Argentinians still supported Millet, even after uh, his austerity measures. The thing is, there is a, I mean, he promised uh, to launch austerity measures, but he said that uh, the political case of sort, uh, no, he actually said the political case will pay for these measures, mm -hmm. not the general public. And what he's doing is actually making the general public for these austerity measures. Uh, for instance, the devaluation, uh, which was a more than, he devalued the, the peso for more than 50%. Right. Uh, in, greatly increased inflation. We have uh, an inflation rate that we haven't seen since uh, 1991. So, so what, what does that mean then for ordinary um, people in Argentina? What's happening to them? Well, uh, only in December, beef prices have gone up more than 50%, for instance. That's uh, that's a, a clear indicator of what's happening. Also, the mega decree, which is already in force, repealed the rental law, which regulated uh, rental prices. So, for instance, if you want to rent an apartment now, you can see that uh, the ads are in U.S. dollars and not in pesos anymore because you can uh, do make contracts in any currency, even Bitcoin, if you want. But the thing is. Uh, yeah, uh, rental prices have gone up, and uh, for 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 instance, the the new omnibus bill seeks to uh, make even further cuts to things like uh, popular libraries, which are uh, uh, keep kept by the state, or like uh, pensions. Um, more more workers in the state. Uh, he he wants to fire more workers in the state, which he has already started doing. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing, uh, like a very uh, complex and thorough austerity package, which he says is the only way to yeah. fix Argentina's uh, yeah, economic problems. That's right. He has said um, several times there will be pain before there is gain. Facundo Iglesias in Buenos Aires. Facundo, we appreciate you giving us the latest. Thank you. Well, I'm joined now by Ramiro Tosi, an economist and a former Argentinian undersecretary of finance. He is in Buenos Aires. Mr. Tosi, it's good to have you with us on this Wednesday. Uh, president Malay ha has been president for just six weeks, and now the country is bracing for the first general strike of his presidency. Uh, 260 flights, I understand, have been canceled by Aerolíneas Argentinas, I mean, thousands of travelers are impacted by this. Explain to our viewers, why is this strike happening now? Hi, Ben. Uh, nice to see you again. Yes, as you mentioned, uh, Argentina, uh, or Javier Millet, has his first uh, strike, which is, uh, most analysts say, it's too early, if you consider history. But if you take into consideration the dynamic of the macroeconomic situation in Argentina, it was of a kind of predictable situation because remember that last year inflation went on the, uh, let's say, at the fastest pace on the planet. It was 211 percent, was was surpassing even the Lebanon inflation. And then in, Dece in, in December, the first month of January of Millet's presidency, it was 25 percent. So at the same time, most of the workers uh, didn't have, let's say, a recovery in their wages. So there is a lot of frustration and anger because of the pace of this inflation and erosion mm -hmm. of the purchasing power of these salaries. Last week, uh, President Malay spoke at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Um, he had some tough words for the West. Uh, take a listen to part of what he said. I am here today to tell you that the West is in danger. It's in danger because those who are supposed to defend the values of the West find themselves co-opted by a worldview that inexorably leads to socialism and consequently to poverty. Do not let yourselves be intimidated by the political caste and by the parasites that live off the state. Do not surrender to a political class that only wants to perpetuate itself in power and maintain its privileges. 
The, the political cast and, and the parasites that he's talking about there, is he talking about the people who are striking and bringing the country to a standstill? Well, that's an interesting question, because if you see during the campaign, uh, most of the people thought that the cast was mainly the political parties that were that are in power for the last 20 years and so, but sometimes when he complains about, for example, the delay in approving the omnibus bill that he sent to the Congress, he's also talking about, let's say, some uh, entrepreneurs, some other uh, associations, some people that are complaining because of the implications of this bill. So apparently this concept uh, is broader than only, let's say, the political uh, parties in itself. Is President Malay's policy of what he says is fiscal responsibility, is it even possible in Argentina? I mean, he seems to think that this kind of tough love government is an endangered species, not only in Argentina, but also all across the West, in the United States, and also here in Europe. So let me start with your home country, Argentina. Is it even possible? Well, if you take into consideration the history of fiscal adjustment in Argentina, there's no previous experience of a massive fiscal adjustment like the one that the Javier Milei administration is trying to pass in the Congress. We are talking about five percentage points only in a year in order to get to the uh, equilibrium in the uh, in the public accounts if you take into consideration another fiscal adjustment or even in emerging markets or even uh, let's say in, in developing countries there is no such let's say brutal adjustment in sh in that short period of time so it will mm -hmm. be really challenging even if the omnibus bill is passed in the congress well, I'm, I'm wondering, and, you know, this is for people who are not economists. Um, is it the, the, the economics that are, are the problem here, or is it the politics? And I know when you were undersecretary for finance, you resigned, um, as did your colleagues, because there was a clash with the way that the government was, was headed. Um, is the politics what makes the economics many times in Argentina not work? Well, that's an interesting question, Ben, because uh, politics and economy, let's say, are linked together. Sometimes you may think that you, you are able to take some economic measures, but if you lack the political support to implement that, let's say, it's a real problem. So I think that in the end, uh, the limits of the fiscal adjustment will be uh, put into the Congress. And we will see if Javier Milei has the chance to effectively put this adjustment in practice or not. And, and what about the, the powers that be in Congress? I mean, are, are they willing to work with the president, at least in, in, for the time being? Well, uh, we just heard that this is important, that uh, the government just postponed, let's say, the, the bill for next Tuesday. So this is a signal that they didn't have, let's say, enough political support to start uh, the session tomorrow as it was planned before. So I think that during these days, they will try to get some new alliances, some new concessions in order to get this uh, bill passed in Congress next week. I, I understand, too, there's a bill for um, expanding how many people pay income taxes in Argentina. And according to, to the bill, it is a very progressive taxation system, which sounds reasonable. Um, what's your opinion? What are the chances of that becoming a reality? Well, that's uh, an interesting debate here in Argentina, because remember that uh, prior to the second round of the ballot touch in Argentina, former candidate and the Minister of Economy, Sergio Massa, passed a bill uh, which eliminated, in a way, the, the income tax. It only now applies to nearly... 80,000 employers of obviously the big incomes guys. So now that the, the the new project has been submitted, again, it regained, let's say, the progressivity of the system. And as you mentioned, it's a typical, let's say, progressive tax that around all the world or even in OECD countries is well-founded and is, uh, let's say, the best uh, type of uh, taxation that you have to be in place in a country. 
And do you, do you think it's going to work in Argentina? I think that there will be uh, support because uh, from one side, let's say from the political standpoint, it's, a, it's the correct move. And on the other side, if you see, let's say, the, 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 the support that it may have, it comes mainly from governors because this uh, tax is distributed um, uh, between okay. the nation and the provinces. So they will obviously support this because they will regain some of the uh, revenues that they lost when this bill was passed last year. Okay. Economist Ramiro Tosti joining us tonight from Buenos Aires. Mr. Tosti, we appreciate your time and your analysis. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure.